I've got my broom comb ready and I have tapped in my nail about eh, two to three fingers in. And you remember that if you take a look at it, you don't want it all the way in. You want it up a little bit and that is what holds that uh, string on so that your broom doesn't slip. I am right handed so I want the broomstick to the right and my broom corn to the left. Okay. I also want to make sure that when I start out here I have the nylon coming off the top of the spindle not the bottom. And I've got my jerk string ready. So it's about what eight inches and it has an overhand knot. And it doesn't hurt to have a couple of them hanging there. So if you can't find one, you can find the other. So I'm going to get my knot on here to go. So it's just, we're going to make a slip knot. Just a little overhand knot on the end. And then I'm going to come around three fingers. Where it intersects, I'm going to hold it. Turn it upside down. Look for the rabbit in the hole. Bring that up. And then what I like to do is tighten up this short string a little bit before I pull it tight. And that's sliding on the long piece that way. And that's what we want. So when I put this on, I'm gonna have to back my spindle up a little bit, get some tension on it. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm gonna wrap for three times. Make sure that I don't get my head in the picture. So about three times. Now what I'm going to do, I've sectioned off that um, natural broom corn and I am going to put oh like one row here and I'm going to leave these up about four fingers. And I just kind of want to spread that around. I do it in halves and then come around, grab my other little section that I've sectioned off. And I'm going to make sure that that's even with the other. And then I'm going to spread that so you have it nice and smooth around. And then I'm going to wrap for three. So this, if you look at this um, broom, is kind of like the petticoat portion of the broom. How's that? We're going to go one more. That's actually four, but that's okay. And I can see where I'm starting because I can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more row of these, or one more layer, just to give it some bulk. Okay, and then grab another bunch. Layer in there. I can make sure it's about there, let it loosen up a little bit to cover it around, and then we're going to do another three wraps. Or four. It's fine. I'm going to, um, I've got this just a little bit wet on the ends because what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of add some shoulders here. So, and that might be a little bit too big. Yeah, so I'm going to um, take that and have it. It's easier on your hands. And you see I'm going upside down here because I'm going to build some shoulders. If you um, make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to put one shoulder here. And then I'm going to put another shoulder on the other side. And I always say, think spaghetti servings, because that's about what they are. And I'm going to match that with a, that one. And this is going to, of course, shorten this up. So this is why this looks more like a petticoat. All right, so we are going to keep those on the sides, because we're building some shoulders. And we're going to wrap for about three. And then... If it's wet enough, this is going to work. I'm going to give that a little bit of moisture. What we want to do is bend this down. Okay. See how that builds shoulders? So, 
I'm going to bring this one over. Make sure I can bring it down just a little bit more. And we're going to do the same thing here. Bring that over. And we're going to wrap this again. For about three. You can see this doesn't look real handsome. That's why we're going to put a cover over the top. So we've built those shoulders. And now we're going to do another layer. Okay. Of our... What would you call that? Variegated, mixed, whatever. Multicolored broom corn. How's that? So, and once again, that's a little bit thicker than I like to start with. So I'm going to have that again. Just easier for my hands to do smaller layers. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come up, oh, what, like two inches from that original one. We're going to kind of spread that out. And we're also going to do an advance while we do this. So... We're going to let that spread around, and if we don't have enough, we'll put some more on. Same thing, I'm going to kind of line that up there, spread that out, bring it over some. And you'll see I'm actually going to be lower than this last section when I, when I uh, tie this on it up. for four. Okay, and I'm going to do another advance. Wrap that for about three or four. And I'm going to do one more advance. And actually, at this point, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, put in my jerk string. Because I'm going to do this last advance. And then I'm going to finish this off. And we're going to plate the top. So when you put this in, make sure your jerk string, because I'm right handed, is to the right. And when you're laying this on, I'm going to make sure that you keep it flat, with no turns in it to grab. And we're going to do this for about four rows. Okay, then I'm going to hold my tension. I don't have my exacto, so I'm going to use my scissors. Cut that. Come over here where the loop is, pull that, well, not that string. I'm going to pull that um, cut and through that hole on the left, come over here and jerk it through. Okay. I'm going to tighten that up, cut that off. Now, that doesn't look real attractive, does it? So what we're going to do is we are going to put some plating on it and work down to cover some of that. Okay, pretty simple broom. You can see how it kind of looks like more petticoats. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either flatten that out with a vise and stitch it down, or in my case, I did not do that even though I had um, shoulders on it. I just elected to not do it, but you could. That one's a little bit more narrow than this one turned out. So either way is fine. If you don't want to do it, that's great. If you do want to do it, you should have um, black from previous kits that you can use to uh, stitch that down with. So I'm going to get my black and show you how to plate this. All right, so I've gone back to the rubber band man thing again. So these are going to be my plates. And they're cut about eh, 14 inches long. You won't need them that long. But 
I'm just a big proponent of having more than you need and cut off what doesn't work. So what I've got this is I've got this set up. I'm actually going to uh, I'm going to fold these over. So I'm going to actually start here and then fold those over and wrap on them again. But one thing I do want to talk to you about is I've gone through here and beveled my little pokies. Because I don't want no pokies poking out. So before you do this, just kind of look and see what, uh, and it, it, when you cut it like blunt, then you get all these little pokies. We want them kind of at an angle. So just briefly, it's not critical, it's just a broom. Go through here and kind of cut your little pokies at an angle. Poke, poke. Okay. So I'm set up. I've checked to make sure that I have an odd amount. Okay. And... I'm going to tie one on again here. Up here, before we start the plating, we want to trim this back so we don't have jagged pokes, jagged edges. So I'm going to trim all that back, which of course this has been done. But what I'm talking about is cutting these guys at an angle. Okay, and it just makes for a smoother coverage than having straight out edge blunt cut. So go around, trim that off so they're kind of at an angle a little bit, makes it a little bit easier. So I am going to use my handy dandy rubber band once again to get these in place. And I've got my plating material wet and waiting on me. How's that? So what I'm going to do is I am going to put these in. Uh, so this is a flat oval material and you want to put it in going parallel with the broom because you're going to actually pull it back down this way. Okay. So uh, I'm going to grab my rubber band and get these guys in place. And once again, remember, it's always easier to kind of shift something underneath there. So it's easier to get them in. And I'll show you that in just a second. I have, these are about 14 inches long. And I have um, made sure they're good and wet. I put them on here and I've used the rubber band to hold them in place until I start cinching. Now I'm going to start cinching right where I trimmed all this guy off. And you see there's what, like maybe an inch here? And that's going to get trimmed back. But for right now we need that while we start the cinch up. So and I had about 15 stakes on here. you got to have an odd amount. And you want them the closest together as you can get them uh, so you don't have gaps. So, here we go. We're going to wrap for three. And one thing I want you to know, as I start this off wrong, once you've got this on, you're going to fold these over. So, that means that you want your broom. Wrap these three times, and the reason that I have my broom on this side on my right hand and normally I would not but I'm gonna fold these over and this is like a replacement knurl so I'm right-handed and I need to be able to braid with the knurl on this side not that side so that's why I've switched the broom Oop, and it's gonna slip on these so I'm gonna do this for three rows just to get it going and then as I come around to the knot I'm gonna take off my rubber band I don't eat him anymore, but thanks a lot. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend these over. And these are wet, right? They're not going to bend if they're not wet. You can either bend and wrap, or just go around and bend them all and then put this on top of it. Either way is fine. Whatever works best for you. Now I'm trying to keep that even as I do it. And... Um, I can make sure that my head is not in the video again. So I'm going to bring those all down and just continue to wrap around it. Okay. And like I say, sometimes because that'll pop, it's easier just to kind of slop around and make sure that you've got all these guys bent down before you actually worry about starting the wrap. Okay, so I'm going to around, once I've got these all bent down, 
<clears throat> and I'm going to start my making sure that these guys are all straight where you want them, right? And moving them around so that they're not at an angle. You want them straight. And you're going to do this for at least two rows. And then take a look at this. This stuff underneath here now, these little short stuff, you really don't need that. So it doesn't hurt to come down here being very careful, lifting that up and beveling these guys. It's just bulk you don't need. Okay. So I'm going to go around being very careful not to cut the ones that I'm actually going to weave on and trim these guys up a little bit. Give them a little bit of a bevel. Okay. And I'll do it around on the other side too. So, and you can see already that this is kind of gappy, and I'm going to show you how we're going to take care of that. First, we're going to do our three rows. This will be my third one. And the reason it's gappy is that you're going from a real uh, narrow diameter and you're flaring out to a larger one. Well, that means that you're going to have to have more coverage, right? Bear with me as I try. Beveled underneath. And I've got them folded over. And so I'm going to wrap for three. And as I do, I'm going to straighten these guys out. So that they're not at an angle. They're straight up and down. Or as much as I can do at the moment. Until I start the braid. So here's number two. And here's number three. Okay. So. Now I'm going to start the braid. And you can see already it's gappy. Okay. But we're going to do about three rows and then I'm going to show you how to add on to this. Still got to use that finger to get that over tight. The other thing that helps if you're having trouble is lifting these guys up, getting it tight. I just want to make sure that I got my weave on. It is harder to see it because you're weaving black on black uh, plating material. So pay attention. It's over and under, right? And it should be. Um, should be continuous, so it means your second row should be opposite from the first row. If it's not, you got a problem, or you've made an error. Okay, so, so far we're looking pretty good here. But it is getting a little gappy, and that's not what I want. So what I'm going to do is, as I finish up this third row, I'm going to add on some more plating material. So if this was a basket, and I wanted to add, in that case, it would be called ribs. Um, what I would do is I would add on in an even amount. <clears throat> so I'm on my third row. And you can see there's that, that nice weave that I've got going there. and <clears throat> But you can also see as I keep going, it's going to get uh, more broad. So what I'm going to do is as I come around this time, see there's like a big gap there, right? So if I want to uh, add on to these, what I want to do is I want to add, um, actually I'm going to back it up a little bit here because there's a big gap there. Um, I want to add where I can grab uh, a new and a new addition as an over, okay, which makes this next stake off our next plate, okay. But what I'm going to do then, and we'll trim these back. What I'm going to do then is add another one, a second one, and then that puts the weave on. Okay, so 
Now I'm just going to keep going because basically what I wanted is another piece there. But in order to do that, I have to do two pieces. So I'm going to keep going here and see how it looks. And if that's all I need, great. If not, then I'll add some more on. See, it's kind of gappy right there. So I'm going to back up one. I'm going to add my first new guy here because it's an over which throws this guy off for one stroke. And then I'm gonna put another new guy in here. And I am on again. Okay. So let's play with that for a little bit and see if that's all that I need. I might need some more like right here. Probably is a good idea to add some too. See how that's pretty gappy? So we're gonna do it again. We're gonna back it up to where it's an over. When you add, you really need to add as an over because it grabs it and secures it into the weave. So I'm gonna bring this back here. I'm gonna lay that guy in there over it. Grab the next guy and go under. That secures it. And then remember the weave is going to be off until I add another one. And so <clears throat> that's my under. This is my over and my weave is back on. Okay, Let's see if we can make it around here and it looks good. We're still weaving with an odd amount. It's a little gappy here, so we're going to do the same thing. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm adding on to these guys as I need to on this, this first round. If I see it's gappy at all, like I don't like the look of that, so I'm going to add two there. And I may add two, another two on there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish those up, but that's how you do it. And then we're going to weave down to about right here. That's next. Okay, so I... Uh, gone to about down to where that last wrapping was. That's what I was wanting to cover up. What I want to show you is I added about 10 more of those stakes. Made a big difference in coverage. And then what I do is I just trim those back up top. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off. But before, I do want to show you the difference here. So you got two ways to do this. You can uh, I think there was like 15 around here to start. You can do that and do it a little bit on the gappy side, finish it off, bring it down, tie it on again, and get that kind of corset look if that's what you want. That's fine too. I wanted to uh, do two versions of it so you have a choice. If you don't like doing this braid, you can, you know, this is all this is is three wraps and it's uh, tied off with another one started down here to finish and then just, you know, at an angle to make it a little bit more decorative. Or you can cover the whole thing in braid by adding on to it because there's no way this diameter is going to cover the same diameter that is with 15 stakes. You have to add on. And like I said, I added on like 10 for that to work. And you can tell where the gaps are. If you're going to do this method and add it on, add it all on in the same row. Okay, don't they like do it two down here and then oh there's some gaps here. Fill the whole thing in. Okay. And then it looks more like you intended to do it that way. And you don't have to do like for every one, then it would be too thick. But I ended up adding about ten more. So with that in mind, now we're gonna put our jerk string in here. I'm right-handed, remember, so I got the knot on the right. And I'm gonna wrap for three. I did a lot when I was uh, braiding this, sprayed this down, just so you know, you want to keep it, keep it wet. So as I come around here, I want to make sure that I've got that nice and flat. And I'm cinching it up tight. I'm going to go around for three. Right, then I'm going to hold that tension, cut this down here. I 
I'm going to grab my loop, pull that cut string through there, over here and grab my jerk string. Well, this is in my tension. Oh, yeah, and it didn't work that time, did it? Hmm. Let's try it one more time. There you go. And then pull it around something. Doesn't matter what. Pull it up tight. Trim it back. Now, what I'll probably do on this broom is I will, uh, this one looks just to me like it would be better flat. So I'll uh, flatten that broom and I'm going to keep these long things on here. I think it kind of looks like it's bleeding off the sides, which is kind of cool. So in this case, I probably will put this in a vase and sew it, or vase, a vise and sew it down. This one just didn't feel like it needed it. I could have done it, but it, you know, it does have shoulders, but I just thought, yeah, you know, it's okay the way it is. So this is an up to you thing. You can put this in a vise and sew it down with some of your black string from a previous kit, and that'll work great. Or you can leave it the other way. You can braid the top all the way down, or you can opt for the corset look. Your call. Two great, two great variations on a fun broom. So um, remember that next month will be your final broom and it's going to be the hocktail it will look like this so we'll see you next month for our last broom of the jcb fall broom kit club